Okay, so in this video we're going to determine if a system has one solution, zero solutions, or infinite solutions. So let's start off with an augmented matrix and see what this means. Let's do a really simple one first of all, and let's maybe say 1, 0, and 0, 1 is equal to 1, 1. Okay, so this augmented matrix represents the system of linear equations. It has two equations, so let's just do them in different colors here. The top one is, let's call this x and y for our variables. So the first equation it represents it would be x is equal to 1. And we'll switch colors for the second equation which would be uh, 0x plus y is equal to 1. So it's just y is equal to 1. Alright, perfect. So that's our system of linear equations that this augmented matrix represents. So now when we, our solution, our solution here is just the 1, 1, but that can be represented graphically. So we'll just draw some coordinate axis here like so and just quickly label it that'll be 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1, and 1. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw in our our first equation where x is equal to 1. So that means x is equal to 1 at every y coordinate. So it's just going to be a horizontal, a vertical line, sorry, oh, it's not very close. Vertical line going like that. This is the blue one, this is again is x is equal to 1. Now for y is equal to 1, we'll draw that in green, and that just means for every x coordinate, y is going to be equal to 1. So it's going to look like this, graphically. So let's just write that here, y is equal to 1. And basically the solution that we're getting, that our solution is 1, 1, the, the, the vector 1, 1, and that's just the point where these, uh, where these two lines are, are intersect. So the here, this point is 1, 1. It can be the vector 1, 1 or coordinates 1, 1. So again, so now we've seen this solution, uh, sorry, this system here of this augmented matrix, uh, this, this system only has one unique solution. So what would it look like if we had zero solutions or infinite solutions? Well, we would have here, yeah, let's draw it, um, let's draw it like this. So here we had one solution, or like this, one solution. Looks something like this. We have a line going this way, maybe a line going that way, and there's just one point that they intersect. If we had zero solutions, zero solutions, it would look something like this. There would be a line here, and the other line would have to be parallel. So ensuring that these two well, these two lines never intersect because if they're slightly unparalleled, they will intersect at some point. And then for infinite solutions, uh, let's write it here. Infinite solutions. It would look like well, it would look like this. Basically, we'd have one line, and then uh, we would just have the other line, the second line that we're talking about, would just be directly on top. And so, at every point, you can imagine on this line there's another solution about where those two lines are intersecting. So let's work through an example for each. Well, we've actually already done one solution, but let's do some here with a few more variables just so you get the hang of it. So we'll write for one solution, uh, one solution. Let's do the, uh, let's make the matrix like this. Let's say we have one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one, and equal to one, two, so this is basically representing the system of linear equations that looks like this. It looks like, well, so we have x, y, and z for our variables. We would have x plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 1. We'd have 0 plus y is equal to, or sorry, plus 0 is equal to 2. And we'd have 0 plus 0 plus z is equal to 3. So when we reduce this, we find that this just is, well, let's say x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3, or also this just equals um, the vector 1, 2, 3. As you can see here, it was already given to us. And so that's with one solution. Now, for, um, for a system with zero solutions, let's look at this. Let's take you know, switch colors so we don't get lost. Say maybe let's do it in red. We haven't used that in a while. So let's say zero solutions. 
zero solutions. Um, let's pick a let's pick a matrix that looks like this. Let's say we have one zero zero um, zero one zero and maybe zero zero zero. And let's say this is equal. Uh, let's see one two three again. So this system uh, this matrix represents the system that looks like this. This would be x plus zero plus zero is equal to one. Then we have zero plus y plus zero is equal to two. And then we have zero plus zero plus zero is equal to three. Now we can look at this right away. We would say, well, sure, um, x is equal to one, y is equal to two, but zero is equal to three. No, that doesn't work. You can't have zero plus zero plus zero is equal to three. So uh, we have no solution. Now if this 3 was a 0, 0 plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 0, that would be okay. But if you ever see a, a full line of zeros on the left with a, a non-zero number on the right, you know right away that system or that matrix has zero solutions. And let's change colors one last time and we'll do an example with infinite solutions. So let's say we have um, let's say we have maybe 1, 0, 1, 0 and then 0, 1, 0, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 1. Let's say this is all equal to 1, 2, 3. So let's write the system of linear equations that this represents. We have, let's write it over here. Let's say we have, or so it'll be, let's call this actually A, B, C, and D. It's a little easier to work with if we have four. So we would have a plus 0 plus c plus 0 is equal to 1. And then we'd have 0 plus b plus 0 plus 0 is equal to 2. And then we have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 is equal to 3. All right. And so that will give us... Um, Let's simplify this a little. We have, let's write it down here. We'd say this is a plus c is equal to 1. We have b is equal to 2. And we have d is equal to 3. Now, if we write this uh, to represent a through d, this is the same thing. We're just rearranging. So we want to have a is equal to, b is equal to, c is equal to, and D is equal to, Let's separate that out. Okay, so A is just equal to, well, if we look at the first one, it's going to be equal to um, 1 minus C. So A is equal to 1 minus C, sorry, 1 minus C. Um, B is going to be equal to, well, B is equal to 2, so that doesn't change. And C, we're just going to say that C is just equal to C. And here, I'll just finish up quick here, D was equal to 3. So C here is the odd one out. And that's because, well, these uh, this matrix here is just a, like a, it's a set of vectors. So we have the second vector A, B, C, and D. And so we have uh, these three here, A, B, and D have their leading, these are leading entries in the matrix. And we see that C here, you see the C is the odd one out because this, this value here isn't a leading entry. This is behind uh, the leading entry that's found over here. So basically, what we say is that this vector here is linearly dependent, or this whole, sorry, this set of vectors is linearly, linearly dependent on this vector here, C. Because if it was just the three, if it just had three linearly, uh, or leading variables, like this vector over here, or sorry, this matrix over here, um, is a collection of three vectors, and they each have a leading variable in them. So this is a linearly independent set of vectors. So anyways, back to here, we're talking, this is a linearly dependent set of vectors because one of them is the odd one out, um, and all the other vectors here depend on C in order to get this solution. So what we've, come to, what we've come to find down here is that A is equal to 1 minus C, B is equal to 2, C is equal to C, and D is equal to 3. Well, if we wrote that in vector form, um, that's going to be equal to just this vector, 1 minus C, 2, uh, C, sorry, and 3. 
And what we can do is we can pull out the C here. And when we do that, if we pulled out the C, that's the same as saying, well, this is equal to, um, it's the same as equal to, we're going to get two vectors. So we'll have this plus C plus something else. And so the parts that have C in them is what we've pulled out. So we've pulled out a nine, minus 1 here, and we haven't pulled out anything in the second part. And we've pulled out 1 in this position, and we haven't pulled out anything in the bottom position. And then what we look up here is we take, we take away the things that weren't here before. Or sorry, we consider the C's that we've removed, and we would have 1, 2, 0, and 3. So that is the solution. This is an infinite solution. And the way that it is, because C can be any number. So if we put in a 1, a 2, a 0, negative 1, any real number will satisfy um, these infinite solutions along the two line or along the line that they both lie on.